So, hello everybody. Uh, this is Andrea Taroki speaking, um, and uh, I'm joined uh, by my colleague Hugo uh, Guerrero. We both work at Red Hat, and uh, we both contribute in different ways to the uh, Camel Kafka Connector uh, project, which is the topic of this uh, presentation. So, uh, when you need to talk with uh, everything, almost everything, like everybody who wants to talk with the um, JD Council as an instance, and you need to uh, bridge different languages uh, across different people, and you had uh, already a way to do in so-so someone or something that can do it uh, for you, why wouldn't you use it? So in the same way, since we had already uh, Apache Camel, an integration uh, framework well known and established with years of production under his belt. Why wouldn't you use it in the context of uh, making Kafka speaking with everything else? But uh, let's start uh, uh, from the beginning uh, with a quick recap of what is Apache Camel. So um, I, I suppose most of you know the, the project already. In a uh, in few words, is uh, the Swiss army knife of integration framework with more than 300 components, data formats, and protocols. You can use it to uh, write very easily flows of integration between the most disparate systems. Um, so what, what's the problem that uh, the framework is trying to solve? So you have a system A that wants to speak with system B. You need something in the middle to um, bridge the different transport, different data, and so on and so forth. And that's what you use uh, Apache Camel for. It is based on well-known and established uh, enterprise integration patterns, uh, a quite old book, but still very actual today. And in a nutshell, what, what uh, you write is this which is a camera out that say from uh, in this example file to a JMSQ and that that's more or less everything you need to write to um, grab the file uh, in that data inbox directory and put the content in the in that uh, order queue. We had, the project has different DSL supported the Java one the XML but those are only uh, a few examples. There are more like Groovy, JavaScript, YAML recently. Um, very quickly, uh, what's the camel architecture? You have a camel contest that um, binds everything together. In the camel contest, you have the route, that is the piece of DSL that uh, we have seen before. And then you have the enterprise integration patterns that you can use inside your route. And, but what you need to focus on uh, mostly for this, uh, for the purpose of this presentation is this bottom part here. There are, those are the components. So the components are the pieces that connects, that makes you uh, connect with external systems. You have a number here listed, but there are other for software as a service uh, um, that you can imagine like, uh, I don't know, Salesforce or Workaday or Google, uh, documents and, and stuff like that. Last, last but not least, um, if you had used uh, Apache Camel in the past, in the last year and a half, two years, there has been um, quite a new project started un under the Apache Camel umbrella. These are the one uh, listed here. Today in this presentation, we focus on Camel Kafka Connector, which is the newest one where you are. So with that said, the second step is to have a quick uh, Kafka intro. And uh, for that, uh, I, I ask Hugo to do that. Hugo, over Thank to you. Thank you, Andrea. OK. Let's go to the next slide and give a quick uh, recap on, on what it's Kafka. So 
we uh, I know we are in the in the camera track. If you have been in some of the sessions on the streaming track, you have been heard about what is Apache Kafka. It's this project that was created in LinkedIn around 2010, and it's uh, it has very different definitions depending on how you are using the tool. And, and recently, it has uh, taken a, a different formats and, and it has been increased the amount uh, use Apache Kafka for. Uh, but basically, you can uh, use it as a published subscribers messaging system, so you're able to uh, send events and share uh, messages uh, through your uh, microservice architecture. But also, it's now a data streaming platform that allows you to process the uh, events that are flowing through the system at uh, the same time as they are happening, uh, and giving you this uh, real-time uh, type of, uh, of processing for, for data. Uh, but it is, in its core, a distributed commit lock, a very and, and, and high um, scalable uh, distributed commit lock where you can uh, get all your events coming through the system and, and being stored in, in, in that commit lock. But that's just what it's uh, part of the Apache Kafka uh, core or the one that it's uh, that it's under the Apache uh, Foundation umbrella. However, it is it has outgrown from 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 what it's an, under the Apache Foundation, and it broader ecosystem where you can find other components uh, that are related, uh, not just uh, for the broker and, and the APS, but also other components that are related to that um, ecosystem. So that's where you can find. Um, uh, replicators and, and mirror maker, and you will find HTTP proxies to uh, uh, bridge the protocol for uh, clients consuming from the uh, from different clients to uh, translate into the uh, uh, Kafka protocol and so on. If we go to the next slide, um, we can see a little bit more on the Kafka Connect uh, API. So this is a, a set of uh, of rules and APIs and in a framework that allows you to uh, bridge this uh, this gap between the consumer and producer APIs to be able to transfer data easily between systems. Um, and it, the idea is to facilitate the conversion, the scaling, applications that are dedicated to put data into the cluster. So there's this uh, concept of uh, connector plugins that are deployed into a Kafka Connect cluster that allows you to be able to uh, to manage the uh, the life cycle of these uh, applications using the connectors to be able to move data in and out the the cluster. So uh, the the only limitation that we have with this approach is that uh, currently under the Apache Kafka project, there's only two connectors or plugins available: the file sync and the file source. However, we know that if we are dealing with integration, we need to add a lot more systems to our um, architecture. We need to connect suddenly our um, main uh, backbone to the rest of the system that we have. So in this case, there's the need for having additional plugins available uh, outside the uh, uh, Kafka project. So if we go to the next slide, we can see that this is mainly because certain benefits, right? It's, it's part of the, uh, of the Apache Kafka distribution, so uh, you're uh, actually uh, well tied with the, uh, with the broker and, and all this ecosystem, but it also allows you to have this uh, availability of being able to manage the life cycle, being able to scale, and also being able to track the, uh, the, the uh, offset that your uh, connector is reading to and being able to also apply some uh, certain transformation, for example, if you're using the single message transformations, as well as being able to uh, set up uh, easily in a streaming or, or batch type of integration. So it's it's a, a way to handle on under the uh, traditional uh, uh, effort, effort and, and focus on uh, having this worker application or this task being able to uh, be running on, on, on all time and having the, the high availability distributed nature also from, from Kafka. We go to the next slide. Then, Andrea, can you tell us a little bit more about the Camel Kafka connector? Yeah, sure. So, the Camel Kafka connector project. Um, what it is in a nutshell. In a nutshell, uh, is a tiny integ integration layer in between the uh, Kafka Connect API and the Camel uh, ecosystem you've seen. So 
um, basically we have bridged these two uh, frameworks to work great together. If you look uh, at it a little bit under the hood, um, the interfaces you need to implement are, are those listed above. So the Kafka source sensing connector and the Kafka source sensing task. And uh, what Camel Kafka connector does is um, embedding a Camel contest in each uh, Camel Kafka source task or sync task. And in this Camel contest running uh, a little route for you that uh, more or less you can configure just using this property file. Uh, that, that is really all, all, all it is about, all the magic. And uh, obviously that's a very uh, simplistic explanation just to uh, give you an idea if you know a little bit what Camel is to make you uh, curious maybe to contribute. Uh, there is more, um, the Camel contest is tied to the um, Kafka Connect lifecycle in, in some ways. And I mean, there is a little bit more, but in a nutshell, the, 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 this is what it is. Um, and so with this, we are able basically to create one uh, Kafka connector for each Kama component and exposing all of the options uh, each Kama component has. So why you should uh, use Kama Kafka connector? Uh, I'll ask this to Hugo that can give us also some uh, re real example from, from the world. Hugo, over to you. Yes, so exactly. Why would you be able to use this, uh, this connector? So wh what does, does it mean for you when working with, uh, with Kafka and in Camel, right? So the idea is that you need to uh, be able to get data into and out of your cluster. And you need a, a simple way to do that. Sometimes it's not this complicated type of ESB that you need to uh, do connectivity between your systems. So you just want to do some very um, simple load, very simple uh, 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 extract too. So that's why uh, having all the benefits of uh, using uh, a single different type of, because if you go to the uh, different providers and you find that there's um, connectors coming from different uh, sources, you can see that you will need to uh, understand and, and learn how to use each one of those connectors com uh, coming from different providers. In in this case, Camel provides you and it helps you with a simple unified way to work with all the different components available in the, in the Camel ecosystem. So in this way, you can uh, use, for example, the uh, connectors to be able to consolidate events that are stored in Kafka and being able to extract them and send them to, for example, MongoDB, where you can use uh, MongoDB sync and then being able to use the data that it's flowing into the database uh, to be able to do some reporting or being able to feed other applications. Also, you can use um, other sync connectors, like for example, the Elasticsearch, that it's uh, one of the my, my most uh, uh, popular examples where you are, for example, extracting data using uh, projects like Divisium, then being able to add data information to Elasticsearch, so you can add then on top of uh, those uh, of that information, some uh, some queries, some search, some dashboards using those kind of ecosystems. Or in the other way, you can uh, also use the connectors as uh, as, as a source uh, type of connectors, and they've been able to uh, ingest uh, information that is coming from other systems into into uh, Kafka. For example, as, as we can see in, in in other examples, we can get data that is coming from, uh, for example, Slack or Telegram, or then be able to uh, perhaps get information that is coming from a, a syslog uh, source. So you are able to then process the information that is coming and flowing. As, uh, as part of your uh, data ingesting. If you go to the next slide, then we can see uh, this uh, type of configuration that Andrea was talking uh, uh, before. So this is the actual benefit of the approach of this team for Connect project. The idea of no need to even think about the uh, Camel DSL, but just stick to the traditional configuration that we already know from the Kafka Connect ecosystem and then being able to configure the uh, different components to be able to um, query and then uh, act as, as, as and behave as, as we expect even for the either for the uh, source or the same type of connector. So the idea is basically no thinking of code, no thinking of uh, deploying, 
but it's just focus on the configuration only, and that's the only thing that you actually need to do if you are already using uh, Kafka Connect. So if we go to the next slide, then we can begin our training. We can get in started. And as, as Jada said, the connection list bros you should. This is actually the point where you can see in, in the camel page, if you go to the camel.apache.org uh, um, file, you can see the list with all the connectors that are currently available. You will one of those connectors are available as sync, as source. Most of the times uh, uh, they are available as both. And uh, you will see the documentation, how to configure, what different uh, uh, parameters that you, that you can, uh, that you can um, work with uh, these connectors. And obviously there's a link so you can download the, uh, the components and then being able to deploy into your, um, into your Kafka cluster. So if we go to the next slide, then we can see um, a couple of examples. Uh, the first one uh, will be um, how to use it on what we call bare metal or just a traditional BM. So as we mentioned, you go to the link uh, that we saw on the previous page that you can download the zip file. If you abstract the zip, light, the zip file, it includes all the different uh, dependencies. And then you can configure the connector just creating your uh, properties file. And in the third uh, step, we are seeing how to use it uh, when, for example, doing in a VM, just uh, passing the uh, properties file. And then uh, when you're running your, um, your connecting standalone mode, it will uh, start the route as, as Andrea was mentioning, and then be able to process uh, your, uh, your load. But if we uh, are thinking about distributed mode, then we can go to the next slide and see an example. And this example, it's now using uh, one of the uh, ways to deploy, for example, Kafka on, on Kubernetes, and, and it's using, um, in, in, in this case, for example, StreamC, that it's one of the operators that allows us to run Kafka on, on top of Kubernetes. In this case, um, we can uh, we can still download the uh, zip file, then we can create just a container image that is the one that is gonna be used as, as a base image for deploying the uh, the Kafka Connect cluster. So we can deploy uh, the, uh, the cluster using that container image that now also includes the uh, Kafka, uh, the, the Camel Kafka uh, connectors. And then we can post using the, and then just uh, paste the configuration as, as part of, of the post method. Or if we are already using, for example, the capabilities of a stream to have a declarative uh, configuration for the, uh, for the companies, we can just create the uh, uh, Kafka connector resource uh, for Kubernetes and then being able to add the configuration there. And if as, as this type of configuration is the exact same type of configuration that you do in a traditional uh, 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 Kafka Connect connector is just the properties and, and the information from the configuration of the connector. So now that you have given your uh, Jedi training, then you can go with Andrea and then continue with your journey. Yeah, thank you, Hugo. Hugo. So uh, now it is demo time, <laughs> let's say, but before uh, showing the demo, uh, it is worth to explaining a little bit what uh, will going on. So we will have a um, Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster already configured. Uh, in this, uh, the StreamC operator that uh, Hugo was mentioning before, um, it is already running in our namespace, monitoring all the uh, Kafka resources. So a Kafka uh, cluster has already been created and also a Kafka connector cluster has already been created. What we will do, we will um, quickly see how to create a source and a sync using the custom resources. So the streams the operator will take care of, of that. If you um, know a little bit about Kubernetes, all this stuff should make sense for you. If you don't, just uh, imagine that uh, what we will do is basically providing the source and sync configuration uh, as you would do on bare metal, but to, to the streams operator that uh, will do the running for you. That That's more or less. So the source uh, operator will uh, pull from uh, 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 an S3 bucket, all the files, and we'll place the content inside a Kafka topic. Then, the sync connector uh, will 
uh, bring the stuff from the Kafka topic to the NSQSQ. So if everything uh, will work, that's a big if as usual, um, you will see that, uh, that uh, the content of that file flowing through all, all the steps and to the SQSQ. So here we have uh, the OpenShift uh, cluster already uh, running everything for us. So here you have the operator that is managing all the other stuff. These are all the pods running in our namespace. You have Zookeeper, you have the Kafka cluster, and you have the uh, Connect cluster. This is the pod that will actually run our um, source and sync. So as Hugo mentioned, we have already downloaded both the SQS and the S3 connector from the um, Kafka, uh, Kame Kafka connector page. And we have already created the uh, source bucket and the SQS destination queue. So what we need to do now is to create our source and sync connectors. To do so, I have a little project here uh, in which I have the two uh, connectors uh, already downloaded. I have them unzipped in my plugin that has been useful to transfer these plugins to this um, pod here, uh, creating a new image basically containing our uh, connectors. But that's already done, and it was actually uh, a very quick uh, one command operation, this one. Um, once everything uh, is, is done and set it up, what we need to do is to create our source and sync. So let's start from the source. This is uh, the information needed. So actually what you really need is this configuration here. So you need to specify the class. You have that in the documentation and also in the examples that are um, packaged with, with each uh, zip file. So here you have the examples to make you started with a reasonable uh, configuration. Um, you have uh, the yeah, key converters and value converters that is um, standard uh, Kafka connect stuff. The topic in which you want to send your data into, the name of the packet that you have created, if you remember, I mean, it's the same I've shown before, and the, your authentication stuff. Um, the authentication stuff, you can place it in a, in a, in a secret that is a little bit more uh, secure and uh, obscure for uh, others not to see them, but uh, for a demo purpose, it doesn't matter. I will destroy that credentials after the demo. So um, then you have the sync. As you can see the structure is very similar. And for the sync, you have a different class, obviously is the SQS sync. But uh, then you have more or less the same properties, different names, but uh, the gist is the same. You have the name of the queue you want to send data into and the credentials to connect to that. Now, what we need to do, if, if everything is fine, uh, is to, uh, we, you have a lot of um, different ways to do, to do this. Um, we are using the OC CLI, but you can use the web interface. Um, you can use uh, other ways, even through uh, Maven, if you if you <laughs> feel so, to basically uh, create this custom resource into the OpenShift cluster, so the um, StreamZ operator can look into it and uh, instantiate the stuff for us. Again, if you are not familiar with Kubernetes things, think about it as a, just a way to provide a configuration. That, that's really what it is. So source, OK. 
Okay, that's created. Then the sync. That's created. So those will run inside this container. We can see logs, what's going on. Yeah. So everything should be up and running. If that's the case, if we upload here uh, our hello message file. Next, next, upload. We should see that it will disappear. Yeah, in a minute or so, that's disappeared. And here in our queue, if we pull for the queue, we should see a new message over low. So if you look at the body, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, the starting uh, and what was in the in the file I uploaded to this this one. Okay, that more or less concluded them. It was very um, quick and as the quote say, it is just uh, the beginning of what you can do using Camel uh, Kafka connector actually. So let's go back to the slides. So a little bit of what's next in the project. The Camel Kafka connector project is fairly new, like uh, less than a year uh, was donated to the Apache Foundation less than a year ago. So what we are focusing on now is these three areas of improvement. So better um, handling of the offset for the resume. So if your um, instance of the Camel Kafka connector get uh, uh, destroyed, shut down, uh, whatever, when you start it again, it will resume from where it left, if obviously it makes sense for the source um, external system is dealing with. Um, a better error handling, uh, more integrated with what Camel does, uh, because right now the error handling is basically bubbling the error up till uh, Kafka uh, connected API and uh, framework can let it handle it. Uh, so I think we can do better here uh, with what Camel has to offer and increase the number of integration tested um, co connectors. Uh, because remember the connectors are, uh, most of them are generated uh, for you. Uh, and, uh, but we have started to add integration tests to see that everything is working. It's not that it's not tested, it's actually ve very much tested because underlying the, uh, there is the camel uh, component that is very <laughs> much tested and uh, mo most of, some of them are more than 10 years uh, old and used in production uh, throughout different uh, customers, use cases, uh, industries. So, but uh, still, that's an area in which we can uh, for sure improve. So what are the takeaways? Uh, we have tried to uh, merge two great Apache uh, projects in the sense of making them work better together, hoping to appeal to both the communities, uh, for the Camel community to have a quick uh, and easy way into the Kafka world and to the Kafka users to have uh, more than 300 uh, connectors with a lot of options uh, that they can use for their uh, use cases. Some useful links. Mm, again, uh, I've mentioned the what's next, but uh, as I said, is a very new project and uh, you are welcome to uh, contribute and steer the project in the direction uh, you see it better fits, so inputs are very welcome. With that said, thank you very much. And if you have questions, we are happy to take them. Awesome, thank you uh, for that wonderful presentation. It was actually a great sacrifice to the demo gods that everything worked out so cleanly on your part, awesome. Yeah, so um, I think you kind of touched upon this, but perhaps you can expand a little bit. 
So Peter was wondering what was what is the difference between a component, as in camel component, and a connector, as in a Kafka connector, or in this case, a camel Kafka connector. So okay, the the uh, camel um, component is the piece of camel that you use to connect with external systems. Uh, the uh, camel Kafka connector. Uh, for that component is basically uh, what I've uh, what I've shown. So a wrap up of the camel component to make the uh, to make it very easily uh, usable inside the uh, Kafka Connect uh, ecosystem. And to, and to do so, basically, you have to package it if you want in a in a in a way that runs inside Kafka Connect. And this way is is basically making a Kafka connector, as is it, it is uh, called. I understand there is a little bit of uh, <laughs> overload of terms of, about components and connector and Kafka connect connector, but uh, yeah, that it is what it is. Awesome. Thank you. Um, is there anything else? I don't think uh, Klaus is commenting something that um, Fat trimming with Quarkus Graal VM. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that was most for Alex, uh, not for you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. So uh, next up, we have integrating Postgres with Apache Camel Active uh, MQ uh, by Justin Rick. So uh, that starts in a little under 10 minutes. Thank you so much for giving this talk and hope to see you all uh, there on that talk. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.